this rain barrel uh, takes all the water from my shed here and we've had a lot of rain lately so it's full and I need to uh, drain some water off so I'm just watering the greenhouse right here behind you. So this is a greenhouse and it is um, designed um, after uh, an idea by Elliot Coleman who is a Maine gardener so he gets uh, similar weather to us, he gets very cold winters and he has devised this method of double protection so you've got the greenhouse with the cold frames inside. So in the summertime I leave the cold frames up, I don't use them. In the winter time they go down. Um, the vegetables that you see in here, uh, the tomatoes will come out, obviously they won't last through the winter, but the rest of the greens, uh, we have tatsoi at the end there, this is mizuna, uh, this is arugula, and they will um, freeze and thaw and they're quite happy doing that and they're still very edible. So. In the winter time, these covers will all be down like this overnight and the plants will freeze, um, but around 11 o'clock or noon, um, even if it's cloudy out, this uh, greenhouse gets quite warm. Like how warm? Um, I have some actual sample uh, temperatures, but they're written down in the shed. Ballpark. Temperature. Ballpark, I would say it's probably, you know, say it's minus 15 out. Um, it would probably be around minus five in here and inside the green the uh, uh, cold frames It's probably like plus 15 or plus 20 So it's hot. Wow. Yeah, it makes a huge difference You've got the heat from the soil and the heat from the so that's just from the Sun. There's no heat source in there here. is no heat source This is like a system with no heat uh, additional heat um, And as I say you don't need a sunny day just even a cloudy day you get, uh, it gets warm in here. What so I come in, lift up the covers, and just uh, bring a basket and some scissors and just harvest some greens, and then just uh, put the covers down. I actually, if it's, a, if it's a sunny day, I do have to come in and lift the covers up for the daytime because it will get too hot under there. They just bake, because these are all crops that like cold weather. And then in the spring and fall, I put in some radishes and green onions. The green onions will just uh, uh, continue in the spring and uh, they'll probably be a, a spring crop of green onions because they're a bit small right now. The tomatoes I put in, I grow, I start the tomatoes indoors and so I use it for both things. I use it for winter greens but I also use it to get my, give my tomatoes an early start and extend uh, in the fall. So I've still got tomatoes ripening beautifully here when the ones in the garden are just sitting there green. Yeah. And yeah, that's basically how it works. It's a very simple system, but it's very effective if you, um, you know, have the space to have greens for the whole winter. So this will provide you with your greens for the winter? It will, yeah. Wow. So are you constantly sowing through the winter? You can't. It's, so I, you, the, just to be clear, it's a harvest garden. You can't grow things in the winter. Okay. That's why you have to get them to a certain height. Right. before the cold weather sets in because then the plants stop growing. Right. Um, and then probably towards the end of February then things will start to grow again so then I can sow new seed in here so then I'll, I'll get an early crop of greens in here and then my second crop of greens out in the other garden. So the plants that we're, we're looking at here, when did you sow these? I sowed these uh, the 15th of August. Ah, uh -huh. okay. That's kind of my planting time. Uh, for everything that I want for fall and winter. If it's not in by the 15th, then it probably won't mature enough. Right. And then you'll sort of shoot for harvesting these out, what, by like March or so, so that you can start sowing for the an early spring? Um... Exactly, yeah. Well, by March, they'll be pretty cut back because I will be harvesting them. I mean, this is our, we. this is the vegetables we eat over winter. And so by the end of February, these plants will be small, but they will start to send up shoots from the roots in February, probably. Right. So I will get another crop from these before they start to bolt. Hmm. And then I will reseed in between the rows. So in a greenhouse this size, it's I think it's uh, 20 by 8, I think. Um, for a family of two or three, you can grow a lot of food in a greenhouse. This is sufficient for your greens for the winter? Absolutely. Yeah. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. 
What is that uh, that uh, pipe I'm seeing oh, overhead? Well, that is that is for ventilation? A venting fan, but I wouldn't recommend it. I bought it because people told me I had to have a fan in my greenhouse. I never use it. It was expensive. <laughs> I just, I put these zipper doors in, they're a cheap zipper, um, they're $8 for this zipper, and I replace them every year, and just tie them back, and that's the only venting I use. And that's sufficient, it doesn't overheat your vegetables in there? Well, it gets to a point where the greens aren't happy, but by then my greens in the garden, that's what I'm eating. So this is, this is for uh, extending the season. Yeah. And a winter harvest of greens. Right. The book that I have used as uh, my model is this book, uh, Four Season Harvest by Elliot Coleman. Okay. Uh, he does have a website and uh, lots of information, but he devised this uh, very simple system and he actually runs a farm where he sells organic greens all winter uh, in Maine. And so this is what I use and he has all the information that you need for building something like this. Um, the, I, I had a little bit of difficulty with my lids. I built the first ones I built kind of fell apart, so you have to. Uh, I had the second ones built for me, and uh, so they, they need to be fairly sturdy. Yeah, it looks like these lids would be. I mean, I can see that they're butted up against each other nice and tightly, they so are. that you're uh -huh. not going to have a whole lot of draft situation go yeah, on, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. Because that's the idea is to keep the heat in. Yes as much as possible. So if I put two of them down here, you can see how they look. So this is kind of how it looks in the winter time. I'll right. This one down. Yeah, they're nice and snug. Now I put irrigation in since I did this, so I'm just going to have to unhook that hose. But this is what it looks like all in when the you... winter when I come in here. Now as Catherine pointed out, these are kind of big. They are. But I well, think you know, as I say, I'll just tuck them back. These will get a little frosted on the ends, but uh, right. you know, well, I'll you'll just, be cutting them too, which will. I help. think probably what I'll do is shear them off mm. and then start cutting the mm. individual branches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And your char too. I, I guess I'm wondering why didn't you just build them higher? Um, because you want to. If you get too too high, then you're losing the effect of holding heat in. Like they're. The, the uh, heat comes from the soil mostly. Right. And so if you get too high up, then A, you've got a box that's high, so that creates problems. Mm -hmm. um, and you lose the uh, holding heat factor. I see. This chart I wasn't planning. I plant, This is the first chart I planted this spring. I was planting it, I planted it just to have little chard greens. And I thought it would just bolt in the summer, but it's kept going. So. I just let it. So I'll probably cut the chard first. Right. It, it's not really designed to be underneath the cover, but it's just doing so well that I left it. Yeah, it's so high. I was wondering what yeah, you're no, going to do. It wasn't really part of the plan. Right. Um, but as I say, it's there's so much of it, and it's so nice that I'll, yeah. I'll harvest that first. Yeah.